In this video, I'll talk about four kind of expensive hobby tools that I own and probably shouldn't. I've been doing this wargaming hobby for a long time. It's really my main hobby besides, you know, photography slash videography and all that, which can be a pretty expensive hobby if you let it. So, you know, let's not delve into that right now. However, wargaming can be kind of an expensive hobby in its own right, again, if you let it. And there have been some times that I've certainly let it. Um, I'm not even going to be talking about expensive models or expensive books in this video. I'm going to be talking about expensive hobby tools I've bought that I either haven't used much or potentially even at all. We're going to start with a few things that I've bought and never used. And it's not because they're not useful. As a matter of fact, I use tools like these expensive tools all the time when hobbying. I just haven't used these tools since I've bought them because they're expensive and I'm afraid I'm going to break them by using them. There's a thing that I see that happens a lot in this hobby, but more frequently with models, right? You know, like I bought this awesome model that I love and it's really big and expensive or whatever. And I'm kind of afraid that if I try to paint it, I'll ruin it. Uh, spoiler, you won't actually. You can always strip it and start over later again if you want. But with expensive tools, I honestly have a hard time convincing myself of that, right? I, I really do believe that I can break a tool if I don't use it right. And it's probably not wrong to think that way. I mean, tools break sometimes, you know? It's kind of like when your parents, when you were a kid, had certain tools that they didn't want you to touch. It might have been because they didn't want you to hurt yourself, but it also maybe was because they didn't want you to hurt the tool. My mom had certain scissors that she used for sewing and stuff like that that we were definitely not supposed to use, you know, to cut open freeze pops from the freezer. Anyway, speaking of cutting, the first expensive tool is a pair of God Hand uh, Ultimate Nippers for plastic models that I bought back in like late 2021 and I still haven't used yet. When I bought them, they were like 65 bucks, but currently they're on sale on Amazon for like $51 in the US. They're, they're clippers. That's pretty much it. They're clippers. They, they do what they say on the tin. Clippers for cutting your models off of the sprue. That's all they do. And they run 50 to 60 bucks, depending on, you know, where you get them and when. If I'm honest, that seems like a lot for some clippers, right? You know, but then I looked at Games Workshop for inspiration. Currently, GW, technically Citadel Tools, sells a pair of super fine detail cutters for $50. I have these cutters as well. I think GW sent them to me at some point. Or maybe I bought them. I can't remember, honestly. So I'll mark this video in YouTube as sponsored content just in case, you know, to cover my bases. Because again, maybe they sent it, but maybe they didn't. Here's my quick review either way. They're clippers, right? They clip. However, for 50 bucks, they're trash. D not worth $50 at all. You can get better clippers for a lot cheaper, absolutely. Or for a little bit more, uh, you can get these God Hand clippers, which are supposed to be amazing. The ratings on Amazon reflect this, honestly. So many reviews with titles that say things like worth every cent or, you know, worth the price. So either these people are just trying to justify their purchase in their minds, you know, or they really have found that these clippers have earned the name God Hand, I guess. I don't know. A lot of people mention how smooth they cut and how they don't like pinch the plastic on the sprue gates like a lot of other clippers. So that's probably a good thing. The Gundam folks seem to swear uh, by these clippers as well. So that's probably good. I'll probably actually try them out soon, I think. They sound pretty good, and if I can convince myself that I'm an adult now and that I'll be careful with them, then God Hand Nipper usage will probably be in my future. However, there's another hobby tool that I still haven't used and that I still kind of doubt I will anytime soon. The Medium Artificer Layer Brush from Games Workshop. Made from the highest quality sable hair, the Artificer range are the best layering brushes money can buy. 
supplied with a plastic tube to guard it against the elements when not in use, the Medium Artificer Layer Brush can really help you achieve results you didn't think you were capable of. Ideal for the smaller details on your miniatures, it'll keep the finest point you'll see on any brush. We've put a lot of care and attention into the design and think you'll truly love using it. I'm pretty sure I won't truly use it at all, even though I bought the dumb thing. Now, I'm not against GW brushes as a matter of course, right? Like, I used to use their regular brushes all of the time back in the day. The main issue for me is that it's a sable hair brush, and I've generally been kind of a synthetic hair guy during my illustrious hobby career. Made a video about synthetic brushes that I like. Pachow. Partially, again, because natural hair brushes are something that you have to take more care of, and again, I'm afraid I'm going to ruin it in some way. And again, it wasn't cheap, even way back in 2017 when I bought it. Yes, I've owned this brush since 2017 and never used it. I know for a fact that I bought it back in 2017 because my local store uses Square for their point of sale at checkout, you know, and I still have the receipt email. I went back through my Gmail and found it. I mainly bought it because I had been in the shop playing probably Age of Sigmar that day, and I, I felt I should buy something before I left, so I bought the brush. Also, the really interesting thing, that brush was $23 back in 2017. Kind of an unheard of price for a brush, I thought. Of course, I'd never end up using it. By the way, they still sell that same brush now, the Medium Artificer Layer Brush. In 2024, do you know how much? $35. Let me tell you, if, if I wasn't going to ruin a $23 brush by using it, then I'm certainly not going to ruin a brush that allegedly increased in value 52% in seven years. I'm pretty sure that's a better increase than my IRA. This brush is going to be part of my retirement plan. Now, heading into a couple of expensive hobby products that I use, but probably not as much as I should. Starting first with uh, this thing that I bought back in 2019, the Cricut Maker, which sold for just shy of 400 bucks back then, but now you can still get it, but it's $260 if you buy it in the champagne color, which is the color I have. If you want it in blue, then it's $380, I guess, which is kind of a weird flex, but okay. Anyway, uh, <laughs> It's a smart cutting machine that can cut 300 different materials, and it's mostly aimed at the kind of crafts community. It has all kinds of interchangeable blades and other tools, and it can do a lot of stuff. What do I use it for? Uh, well, so far, I've really only used it for cutting stencils, mainly for terrain. I get this stuff called frisket film, and then I design some sort of cool design you know, uh, I guess, uh, uh, in, in like Adobe Illustrator, let's say, because I've been a graphics design nerd since the olden days. And then I like get the machine to cut the design into the frisket film. Frisket film has like a peel away backing and it has an adhesive kind of like post-it notes. So not too sticky, repositionable, you know, all that kind of stuff. But then I take the, the, the stencil that I've made that's kind of sticky uh, on the frisket film, and I stick it to a piece of terrain or whatever, and then I get to airbrushing. Lastly, another neat tabletop tool that I don't use near as much as I should, the Proxon Cutter. This is a like hot wire cutter, right? So it's got like a base, and then there's an arm that comes up in the wire and all that kind of stuff. And it allows you to cut straight lines through XPS foam, which is that kind of pink insulation foam that people use in terrain a lot. Or, you know... Most other types of foam as well. They also make it in blue and green, different hardnesses and all that stuff. It'll even work on styrofoam, the white stuff, right? I got mine in 2021, and it was about $122 or so. These days, they're a bit more expensive. As of this recording, you can get one on Amazon for like a little under 140 bucks. To really make it work well for terrain, though, you'll also want to look into getting the Guider Pro add-on from a company called Shifting Lands, which costs 28 euros plus shipping. 
With the add-on, you can easily cut tall walls for terrain and dungeon boards. You know, you can easily cut bricks that'll all be exactly the same size. You can just easily cut things that you need for terrain, right? You could probably design something yourself to do this, make me make something out of wood or whatever, but this Guider Pro thing goes together easily. It's flat packed, you know, and made out of MDF. You just glue it together with some carpenter's glue or whatever, and it makes the Proxon even more useful for terrain or terrain creation. Uh, to date, I've made some walls as practice, and I've made a whole bunch of small little bricks. That's about it so far, though. More terrain soon, though, as I said. So, do I regret the purchases? That's kind of the important question, isn't it? I don't completely. It's not like when you buy fruit or vegetables, you know, at the store and you bring them home and then they go bad because you just keep getting food from Burger King instead of eating the stuff that you bought, right? You know, like that's wasteful, right? It's, this isn't even the clippers and the brush, like they're not wasted, right? I can still use them and they haven't gone bad or expired. I actually will endeavor to use the clippers because I want to see if they actually are worth the price. The Artificer brush from Games Workshop, of course I won't use it. As I said, this is my retirement fund. The Cricut and the Proxon are, are fine purchases for me because they can help me out with my terrain plans, as I said. I've already gotten, you know, some use out of them both, and it's been pretty easy to use them. If you don't have access to a vector design application like Adobe Illustrator, uh, you know, or perhaps the considerably cheaper Affinity Designer, then the Cricut won't do you a ton of good for terrain, unless that you just want to make, you know, use the Cricut's app store to just make a whole bunch of terrain that says like live, laugh, love on it, or, you know, stuff like that. So there are four kind of expensive hobby tools that I own and what I think about them for good or for ill. Have you used any of these things I mentioned here in the video? Have you actually used your GW Artificer brush, or is that part of your retirement package as well? If you're interested in getting any of these non-GW products that I showed today, they're in the link to my Amazon store down below. So buying them through there kind of helps the channel out, and I appreciate it, of course. Also, uh, do you have some other kind of expensive hobby products that you use or maybe didn't use? Let us all know down in the comments below. If you liked this video, I'd appreciate it if you hit the like button. It always does help the channel and uh, helps spread the video around to more people. If you want to see more videos like this every single Friday, then please subscribe and thanks for watching.